Hey, I'm Kyle Scoop, and we're going to be looking at a new game on Game Pass called Ghost Song. I want to just pay a little bit of attention to Humble Games, especially their titles that they've come out with lately. Archvale is a top couch co-op indie game. Argus as well, I think I've pronounced that right. But just look at them clattering past Moon Scars. It's become apparent that they're very good at spotting a decent indie and couch co-op game. You've got Stay the Spire there, One Step from Eden, again, couch co-op, Unsighted, Void Bastards. Fast becoming one of my favorite indie publishers, right. Samus lives in the form of Ghost Song. This is a Metroid down to the wire clone, but in every good aspect. Great soundtrack first off, haunting mellow music on that menu, really cool and got me in the mood for it because we're looking at some great sci-fi, some fantasy sci-fi, look at the backdrops and some of these parallax scrolls, really good stuff, very into this look of game and you've got a 360 degree locked fire which keeps you in position, a close quarters melee and that random firing mode which works on the other stick, I've not explained that well. It's a bit like Cuphead with that locked firing system where the trigger will put you in position and you've got a 360 degree firing arc or you can do that tap the fire button and run and gun mode your starting weapon overheats ridiculously fast you have to do it on a visual level by looking at how red it gets there's no actual meter and let's talk about that starting loadout you are given nothing so you're like where's the dash run button why do i feel so stagnant and the gun is just like a pea shooter oh you're a all is revealed you are obviously not op at the beginning of this and looking around and seeing areas that you can't get to jumps that you can't make doors that you can't open are what metroidvania games are all about also that map is huge just like dead souls you've got the areas that you haven't been to open doors are shown you can even put markers down a bit like breath of the wild so a lot of nods to quite a few different directions here yeah. One of its areas is platforming and it does like to test you quite early doors with how precise you are with getting through a niggly section like this. The enemies at the bottom of this pit are a little bit too powerful for me, particularly the ones with that fist, but you then get an air dash which makes this bit a lot easier. I wasn't taking that on board though and was devastated that I couldn't make it over under my own steam. <laughs> You do die quite frequently. A lot of the brick walls are represented to you as deaths from either really difficult enemies or a pit that's got loads of spikes in it. There's not a lot of dead ends. There's a few that is to do with some machine scanning you. It is brutal in areas and I got quite frustrated with it because I was attacking stuff that I was supposed to go back to with better weaponry and moves. <laughs> I do much prefer a difficult combat scenario in a game like this than a switch situation where you've got to turn loads of stones over to find either a location or something that you've missed with backtracking, you know what I'm talking about. I'd much prefer a difficult arena section. That gives me more incentive to keep trying as opposed to a puzzle which is more about process of elimination. There is a story, there is narration here and there. I think it's the actual suit that's talking to you. It's kind of some sort of a live machine. It feels a bit like a super giant game with its skimpy back narration. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be like a naive child or something which ups the spookiness a little bit and it's nice to have these nuggets of information fed to you when you get to certain sections or save points. I haven't met any substantial NPCs yet but I have come across some derelict robots that give me health boost. Now let's talk about that for a minute. You do get an injection of health one to use during what I would call a run but you're getting that Dark Souls 2 system where more deaths equal a chunk coming out of the end of your health can you see that red mark there that is only as far as i can put my health up to at this point so it's interesting there is punishment on dying a lot and not inserting these nanobots which are these green things that you can see i'm collecting from the felled enemies 
Despite not having a, the double jump, but having the air dash, I attempted this horrible chasm again. Man, it's so evil. It gets really small. Then it sends this damn purple thing over the top of your head. Doing this on a first time basis is something very few people are going to enjoy. Also the noises of the enemies is quite a lot to take on. They're quite loud, they're quite boisterous. And if you repeat in a certain section, some of the enemy shouts, groans and screams will get to you. Actually, when I say get to you, I mean completely put you off when you're trying to do this section because one drop down into that pit is almost certain death or taking way too much damage and the save point's miles away. I know I'm really close to a cool bit of loot and it did come through, but it was tough, but I liked it. Let's talk about those enemies and that enemy design because they are humanoids so far. They're a little like flying bugs and funny like yellow mushroom things, but the majority of stuff that's attacking you is like an upright, strange bipedal almost zombie like to a certain extent with slow moves towards you and like insectoid heads as well with like bulbous eyes they're very well color coded and silhouetted to what they are and capable of the purple ones are the spiked dudes and you see blatant size difference with the big guys that are coming at you with the fists so there is variety but a little bit more would not have gone amiss The game is a little bit eager to giga as well with taking you to a lot of quite high V locations and it does really well with disgusting background noises. These gas dudes, the noises they make, I did have to turn my TV down at one point. I was worried that my neighbors might think something strange was going on. What do I like about it? Well, it's very familiar control system and it's message with the game type, with Metroid being a big influence and having that larger map, having the choice of direction to go in. It's not very linear with saying you must get X power up to go to X section. There are loads of areas that I'm exploring completely in opposite directions on that map. So I enjoy the idea of it being quite wide on its angle. I also like the idea of slotting in different weapons and finding cool loot. You get a different close quarters weapon quite early doors and it's obvious that you're gonna get cool modules to set into your loadout that vastly increase or change the way your character moves and behave. What missed me a little bit is that I cannot believe it's not Couch Corp. It's come from Humble. They obviously have experience in that direction and this could have worked. I think that the character model itself is quite large. They could have shrunk that down a little bit but that brings me on to two recommendations that I feel A, you might already own or B, not realize are out there. First of which is a game called Capsized, which I think is on the EA side of Game Pass. It hasn't cost me anything and it's a hell of a lot of fun because it's pure couch co-op. I put it onto a five more video months ago and it kind of got swept under the carpet and it wasn't until I played Ghost Song that I thought, oh, hang on, there's a couch co-op sci-fi side-scrolling shooter out there that's loads of fun and it includes a really good traversal mechanic you are bionic commando in space and this mechanic interacts with solid objects meaning you can push it onto enemies unlock different secret entrances and there's a wealth of weapons it's a bit hectic a bit crazy to see what's going on but i really enjoy it There's not a lot of side-scrolling sci-fi couch co-op shooters out there, so this one may be worth looking into. There is, of course, Val Faris, the game with the biggest set of testicles on Earth. Absolutely love this. It's just like Ghost Song, but on roids in Fast Forward. You're the biggest badass that ever walked the 16-bit side-scrolling sci-fi shooter genre. Val Faris is in the top five indie games that I own, full stop. I have been Couch Coop. I hope you liked my video. Please like and subscribe and I will see you down there.